excited? Was... There we go. Yeah, we recorded that. Good. That's that's your trick. Yeah, I learned that from Chaz. Yeah, it's how I wake up all the time. Oh, really? Even like work days and stuff too? Oh yeah. I slap slap your face. All right. I slap myself all the time. <laughs> all right. Get my leg in here. <laughs> hey, internet. I'm Dan, and I'm Chaz, and this is Wine is Serious Business episode three hundred. And are you gonna actually get a number for us? At I some know point? we'll get we'll get we'll get caught up eventually, and then then we. We've been saying three something for a long time. That's okay. Now. I need a number next oh. time. All yeah. right, all right. We'll work, we'll work our way into it. We don't have that many in the tubes. We've got some. Number. We've got a couple interviews. We're gonna be working our way through some samples that people have been kind enough to send us, uh, probably for the next few shows. Uh, tonight. Yeah. We, we, we brought these on because we know their current releases. They're for sale right now, and a lot of these sell out pretty fast. So if we delay too long, none of them will be for sale, and the show's a lot less interesting that way. That's a good point. Um, and and it, this is a great opportunity to get to try these wines, right? Like, this is a whole table full of Big Table Farms wine. These, yeah. Uh, they were, the people at BTF were kind enough to send us some samples, so here they are. We've got the Rosé, the Chardonnay Willamette Valley, the Pinot Noir, Pinot Noir Willamette Valley, and the... Uh, can you pronounce that for Halo me? Halo Sandberg. All right. Which has been a favorite of ours yeah. for a number of years. Uh, I, I haven't tried any of these yet uh, for, from these vintages, so I'm really excited to check them out. I got a little bit of yeah. Um, and, and Here? Yeah, yeah, go for it. Yeah, yeah. All right. Woo! Yeah. Let's go deep. All right. There we go. We're going real deep. The rosé, got the off-camera pour right there. Just... So an interesting thing I read about the rosé and the, and, the, and the nice fact sheets they sent us is that That's this there's always ferments dry, uh, and that it, that and that it also goes through full mallow, which I don't think is the case with all with all rosés. Unfine, unfiltered. So yeah, you've probably like, seen a little of that. Cloudy rosé, like it's definitely that, got yeah. a little like pearlescent thing going on here almost. Yeah, right, like a little cloudy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, a little bit of sediment, but that's fine. In my un unfiltered wine, and especially when you're drinking them young, yeah. uh, unfiltered, I'm, I'm, well, generally, I'm fine unfiltered, I'm fine with. There's well, nothing wrong with that. I think there's more yeah. of a trend. I've been seeing it in rosé and in white wines, where they're yeah. leaving sediment in the bottle, and that's, it, it, exp is it is, I, I, I have no problem with it. Yeah. There's things I could say, but it's like really, ultimately, I have no problem with it, neither should anyone else. So. Yeah, yeah. There, All right, real. let's try this out. Do we know what this is? Is this Pinot, all Pinot yeah, Noir? Yeah, Pinot Noir. And, and it said it was uh, Seine, and then it looks like the Seine was put on fruit again uh, and, and fermented with grapes. Wow. My interpretation of that, I'm not sure if that's if that's exactly the truth. I, they chime in for the comments if that's true or not. Uh, but but interesting production there. And definitely there's there's plenty of color in this, right? It's, Absolutely. It's, it's a yeah. solid, solid dark rosé. And, and, and it's, it's more like a salmon color as opposed mm. to being like a pink or right. a, a red or a ruby. You know? Yeah, or, and sometimes you get that electric pink rosé, yeah. and that's definitely not, yeah. Definitely. Yeah, it's more just like, sand, like orangey almost. Anyway, pretty. Mm -hmm. mm. Dan's How's just di diving How's straight smell, Dan? <laughs> Dan's driving straight in. Mm. A little more reserved on the nose. I think it's probably the way I drive in. I'm getting like some citrus peel, like citrus zest. Uh, yeah. Earthy sure. structure, like cherry pit stem, stuff like that. Yeah. A touch, a touch of the watermelon. A um, little bit. There's yeah. like a little hint of that, like leaning back towards more like cantaloupe or, or watermelon. Um, yeah. Again, boy, for, for a rose, big wine on the palate, right? There's a little bit of tan in there. Uh, in the general sense, but for a rosé, then that's on the stronger side. Um, yeah, a lot of texture. Yeah, right? definitely. Yeah, the fruit still has that 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 bright character to it. The watermelon is definitely there. I think uh, a little bit of, a little bit of strawberry flavor, uh, but it's not even, even more like grapefruit too. Like a yeah. little bit like like almost like uh, that bitter citrus mm -hmm. um, sort of like comes up in the finish. Like that sort of flavor or feeling sort of rises up in the finish a bit. Like ruby red grapefruit. Um, yeah. Oh yeah. Kind of across the board. Yeah. It's, a lot of earthy character, and I and I think uh, if if you're one of those folks that finds those those like bright, fresh, fruity wines too insipid, uh, or if you're if if you're really adamant about like I, I definitely want no sweetness, this is a great wine for you, right? Because it is bone dry. Yeah. Um, the acidity must be quite high because if it's gone through full mallow and still has this 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 feel to it, I think I think that's pretty impressive. Yeah. Um, yeah. And and the full mallow was also a great decision because I can't imagine without or without it, it'd be it'd be it'd be pretty tough. So. Be biting, yeah. Um, maybe, maybe we never know. Anyway, moving on, we've got the 2016 Chardonnay Willamette Valley. So, post up some photographs of the label, but uh, um, the labels for these wines are just off the hook. Like, yeah, packaging could could honestly almost not be better. Um, if you're you know watching, I mean? yeah, it's it's I, I definitely some of my my favorite labels of anywhere in the wine world, not even just Oregon, right? Hand drawn, so so husband wife couple, right? Brian makes the wines. Claire designs the labels. 
they farm together, they manage. It's been great talking to them over the years because, you know, they started out buying all the fruit and over time they're more successful and they get contracts to manage, you know, to manage the vineyards that they're working with. And sometimes they have exclusive rights to some of the fruits. Uh, and, and it's been great. It's been great to see them grow, right, in the fruit they've got access yeah. to and, and, and their control. So. And you've seen d definitely more of that than I have. I don't even think I've been out to big table farms. Oh my god! No, it's it's serious. It's like it's it's a mess right now. Like I, I, my life is a mess. Right now. <laughs> we'll just say that. So you gotta get out there yeah. and and and. I gotta get out. If there. I if I'm on my game, you're seeing this the weekend before Memorial Day. I really hope I get this together. Go out there. They're open to the public. It's one of the few times. On Memorial and, Day uh, weekend. Yeah, or yeah. The weekend before. M Memorial Day weekend. Uh, yeah. Appointment. Yeah. Otherwise, appointment. Otherwise, yeah. Uh, right. But it, it's a beautiful sight. They're fantastic people. Uh, smells real nice. Got That's a little bit of that, nice. like lemon meringue pie going on there, right? Yeah. Little citrus, little cream, little crust. A bit, yeah. A little floral. A little floral, definitely. A little barrel. Like, yeah, I see the 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 toast of the barrels coming through quite a bit on the nose. Mm-hmm. Is, is that is that? You think that's the barrel, or I feel like, or maybe it's some yeast. Like there's yeah, there's some notes thing. that that are really on that borderline for me, and I have a tough time a tough time pulling. Okay, because I feel uh, like being an entry level winer of the Willamette Valley is probably not seeing a ton of new oak. Right? Pro like, probably not. No, probably yeah. like a low twenty. Like, you never know. We're speculating, but um, like there's an initial aroma there that sort of reminds you know like a toasted barrel. I don't yep. know, but that's maybe that's like the malic fermentation just paired with like their winemaking style. Who knows? But mm -hmm. but uh, paired with the other fruit flavors in the nose, it smells really nice. Really nice mouthfeel. Oh man, God, that's <laughs> really bright acidity. Sure. Um, that that mm. that that slight barrel or yeast note I was talking about definitely is there on the mid palate as well, uh, providing some richness and filling things out. Uh, the fruit is really, really some some great apple and like Rainier cherry type flavors. Sure. Um, just those light, bright fruits, uh, but but with full body, man, def definitely engaging. I'm running, out, I'm running out of words here. No, it's, but, it's all right. But, the, yeah, the, yeah. the acidic character. Yeah, I'm just letting you go. But the acidic character here is, is ca kind of captivating. Um, like the initial tack reminds me of like underripe pineapple. Mm. Um, there's like this kind of uh, yeah, just kind of fleshy yellow fruit flavor. Um, it's not reminding. I mean, there's definitely a little bit of apple characteristic. There's definitely some citric characteristic. But not um, tropical, right? Not, it's not, not like tropical. A big not ripe tropical. Pineapple. Or yeah, mango, I'm, I'm saying like completely yeah. like an underripe one. Um, but the way that the acidity draws along the the entire experience is quite fa quite quite fantastic, um, yeah. And the texture here is is wonderful for an entry level Chardonnay. I'm sure this is probably what like forty five dollars or something like something that. Something like still, that. Oh, yeah. It's, it's still expensive. Yep. Uh, did I guess forty five. Yeah. Right. On wow. Uh, yep. was, yeah. So, um, it tastes like a forty five dollar Chardonnay. Exactly. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. This this is 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 definitely batting at those at that level, and it's it's delicious. So. And, and, the acidity here is awesome. And I'll even admit, like in, in previous vintages, I, I, I you know, I, I'm feeling kind of hit and miss on the Chardonnay, uh, on, on the entry level Chardonnay. Yeah. Uh, th this is definitely one of the better ones I've had from them. I would uh, agree. And, and yeah, pretty pretty excited to get to try this now. Even though I've never been to BTF, I, I could call it BTF Big Table Farms. I have tasted their wines regularly. Yeah. And uh, and yeah, I agree. This yeah. is this is a, this is uh, one of the better Willamette Valley Chardonnays I've had from them that I can remember. Yeah. Best. Check it out. Yeah. So, yeah. I feel like we're just seeing nothing but good shit, but here it's, it's easy to do. Uh, it's easy it, to do. Yeah. yeah. So and, and right, that's what Dave, that's all we do on the show anymore anyway, right? Right, right David. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, <laughs> it's true. Um, the two, this is the 2016 Willamette Valley Pinot Noir from uh, Big Table Farms. We're doing uh, this one, a little rinse. Substantially higher production, so so 1,800 bottles of this. The chest worried I'd be low energy tonight, but the wine's so good. I'm back. I'm, I'm back in the game. Uh, this, yeah, Willamette Valley, 1,800 bottles produced, so it's out there. Uh, there's a bunch of it. Um, <laughs> Chaz is feeling good on the on the, <laughs> no, on the nose there already. What do you got? Tell me what you smell, Chaz. Uh, it just it just smells like a serious wine. No, it's... Oh. It reminds me of tens. It reminds me of tens on release. Really? Mm-hmm. How so? The fruit's got kind of like a and and not big table farm tens and specifically I, I don't have memory of specific wine and tens, but across the board, okay. it's got a a lighter, more floral nose and and an edge of tart fruit. So like I'm getting like cranberries and violet, uh, I'd say here. And and these are impressions that remind me of 2010. Um, 
It's got like kind of a spicy, yeah. like a spice box aroma, like a weird like something like a like a cake dough or graham cracker component, mm. um, and then like yeah, the, and then the fruit flavors like pomegranate or cherry or something. Yeah. Let's talk about this as an entry level. It's relative, right? This isn't priced like an entry level uh, Willamette Valley Pinot Noir, but I'd say a lot of entry levels are in the the upper 20s to lower 30s right now. So to step up to 50 is not a huge jump, and this tastes like a 50. This tastes like a very good. $50 Where is the majority wine. of this fruit from? It's this is. They say there's a little bit of it from every vineyard they work with. So this is a negative selection, which blows my mind that you get this kind of quality out of the stuff that that they decide doesn't go into the single vineyard bottlings. Like I get, I get it. Um... Like there's maybe not the uh, the weight on the palate they're looking for here. Like this is definitely, well, it's it's still weighty. Like it's still yeah. got great texture. It's light. The tannins. The there's not a lot of tannins. They're there, but okay. they, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a lower lower tannin one. Definitely more of a crowd pleasing style of Pinot Noir. Yeah. Um, like it's it's got like really soft edges both to the acidity and the tannins. Tannins like Dan says, pretty dialed down, but the acidity levels or the acidity is like uh, while it's there and it's totally a present part of the wine. It's, it's just got this nice. Uh, you want to say round, like people say round, yeah. but it's it's mm -hmm. it's legitimate. Yeah. Like it's it's just it just doesn't have edges. Um, right, and and so in that sense, it's it's ready to rock right now. It's really integrated, and in that sense, it reminds me of, of an entry level wine, or it suggests an entry level wine, because while I don't think age necessarily hurts it, I also don't think it needs it at all. Um, but there's complexity here. Yeah, there's, the the fruit flavors are just so inviting and lush and tasty. <laughs> it's just good. Yeah, do yourself a favor, really. If, if you see these, don't don't sit on them for, uh, forever. Like, open open at least one and drink it soon, because this is so enjoyable right now. It's a fantastic bottle of Willamette Valley Pinot Noir. Yeah. Like, it's it's uh, exceptional. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so this is the, let's see if I can get this, Pelos Sandberg? Pelos. Pelos. Real yeah. close. All right, so this is Pelos Sandberg, 2016 Willamette Valley Pinot Noir. Eola Amity. Pinot Noir, damn. Yeah. Oh, this cool. is one they've been working with for a long time. Uh, again. Want to get uh, that? Sure. All right. We're off camera. Yeah, this is. They've been working with these guys for years. At yep. This point, so. And 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 historically, I, as long as I've I've been tasting with them, I guess I don't really know when I started. Uh, but this has been one of the ones I've been excited to try every year. Sometimes I prefer other ones a little more. Sometimes, but but this is. I, I'd say at least an even mix of the time is is my favorite single vineyard. Ooh. And like we were just saying uh, to each other before the show started, uh, we were thrilled with the 15. So We were. Yeah, yeah. And uh, shout out to... Uh, Leanna? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Leanna watches the show. What up, girl? Um, but no, uh, uh, Capers at the airport for selling... Big time. For selling Big Table Farm wine. Uh I take I take BT out or take Big Table Farm wine with me whenever I I, I fly anywhere because uh, it's it's just it's 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 always delicious. Yeah. I, I I don't ever have to question it. It's like I haven't had a bad bottle of wine from Big Table Farm. So. Um, wow, definitely definitely a lot more earth, definitely a lot more structure. Right right on the nose, you can you can tell right away that this is a heavier style, probably selected for a little more for ageability too. Sure. Yeah, I agree. Um, the nose immediately, like what you were talking about, the floral characteristics in in the Willamette Valley, like this is edging more towards like roses, um, mm -hmm. like uh, just just green floral, and then like rose, like rose uh, buds. So yeah, I'm getting a little bit of oak, a little bit of barnyard. This is definitely just a, a darker, more savory wine. I agree. This is definitely just bigger and younger. Um, Getting those cranberry flavors again. Technically not younger. Tastes, sorry, tastes younger. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah def definitely feeling that tannic structure even on the mid palate, kind of building out toward the, toward the sides. Uh, the, the fruit's dominated by cranberries for me. Um, and as I'm talking, okay. the tannins are even drawing my, drawing my tannin a little more. Maybe, maybe like pomegranate, I guess, some of, some of that in there, but some darker type of fruit. I totally agree. Like the structure, like all the flavors are ratcheted up in intensity quite a bit here. Um, definitely lending towards more like uh, pomegranate and uh, dark cherries to me. Yeah. Um, a little bit of savoriness that like wants to, I want to say something like tobacco or something sure. like you know there's like that sort of like uh, something you, like flavors you pick up at like darker like Syrah or 
or I'm not saying, little bit. That, no, I'm not yeah, saying that that's what no, this I, is, I but you know what I'm saying? Like there's this sort of flavors, uh, especially in the mid, like late mid palette. Um, definitely like acidity and tannins are like up here a little bit. This is can obviously feels like a wine, especially coming after the Lemon Valley, way more ageability, mm -hmm. right? Like, or, or that's what they're aiming at probably. Um, for drinking now, still good, but, but, uh, definitely the Lemon Valley is more pleasing. The roses you were talking about on the nose are really coming through on the palate, uh, as well as like some some really distinct black earth. So yeah, just more weight, more complexity, uh, and, and I think a lot of people will be really happy with that too. I, I, again, the polish is still there yeah. though. It's, yeah. it's something about the Big Table Farms, like whatever their production or their winemaking style. It's just um, there's a polish there that I just don't see. Yeah, it's just I'm I'm just it's it's something synonymous to Big Table Farms Pinot Noirs that I pick up and it's. I'm impressed. Even even being such a structured, sort of somewhat robust wine, um, still so pleasing to drink. You can cut this part. That's why yeah, I yeah, paused yeah. for a second. But I feel like we're shills for them a bit at this point. I know there'll be a little. And and uh, and you can leave this in. It's 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 just because the wines are fucking good. Like I'm sorry. Like yeah. I, I felt I felt like I feel like honesty is the key in de delivering a review like this. Yeah. Because, um, like, yeah, even I wouldn't feel bad paying for these wines. No. I, I've, and I've purchased mo these wines multiple times. So, anyway. I think so, the real takeaway for that is, though, is that this is remarkable. Uh, now. As, as far, yeah, and, and as far as, like, the entry level of many producers often is maybe hit or miss, especially when they make a number of single vineyard and higher tier selections. Um, this, is, this is remarkable as an entry level wine. Uh, it's priced appropriately, but it's... It, it's great and and you know you have higher expectations for the other bottles but that really over yeah, delivers I think. over delivered of course um definitely with the the, the pa palos mm -hmm. palos sandberg um definitely wine i would put down for one two three years yeah you know for sure a little more time the chardonnay is delicious Drink it um out. yeah I, I, I acidity level says that it could probably age a little bit and okay then, i don't agree and, and i'm not even scared to age this rosé i Honestly, like I'm like it. Joel I think, Strimling, thinking of you right now. Yeah, I think one to three years on this would be awesome. Anyway, that's just my my own personal opinion. So. Uh, and if you're watching, hopefully I get this up before Memorial Day. Go out, visit them, get on their website, order yourself a bottle. Of this. At least one try that on the Valley Pinot Noir. Jesus, it's yeah. so good. Yeah, so, good times. And, yeah, we'll see you guys next time. Yeah, and uh, hopefully we'll be back Sooner. for more regular shows. We'll hopefully. see. Yeah, yeah, this is a good time, right? Absolutely. Cheers.